Hiya guys, hope you're well. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on my massive £15,000 budget for a new watch. And as if you watched my previous video, the Rolex edition, you know that the money isn't going to be here until possibly late spring, early summer. So it's the hunt of a lifetime and I'm getting you guys involved. That's right, I want to get you guys involved, take you through every step of my decision making, my thought process and in reality guys, by the time the summer comes around, the wife will have got wind of this and it'll be down at three or four grand, so I'll probably end up with a Pelagos. But the exciting thing, I went into Manchester on the weekend and I tried on a shit ton of watches and I've, what do you do? You take a wrist shot, don't you? Every time you're in it, do you mind if I just take a watch watch shot, please, mate? Every time you try a watch on, you've got to take a photo and then you've got to look at it at home, aren't you, afterwards? And that's exactly what I've done here. I've got a load of load of options and I want to talk you through what I am. And there's a, there is one, oh la la, surprise. Not a surprise candidate, but one that was a clear winner on the day. So the first one that I tried on was the Cartier Santos in, is it like a black dial, grey dial? So it's not as bling it, it's more matted, more muted, more toned. And this one actually comes with the black rubber strap. I had a lovely idea of the rubber strap over the leather strap, but it's just a little bit too tool-like watch for me. And I'm actually looking for something. All my watches are a little bit tooly at the moment, really. And I haven't got that one watch that's a bit blingy, a bit shiny. So in my head, I really am looking towards something blingy or shiny at the moment. So that was good. And that was in the large. I also tried on the medium white and a lot of people vote for the medium white as being the best looking watch size wise and i get that to a certain degree in photos even when i look back on my own wrist i think the medium looks better but in reality it's completely different when i put that medium on it felt tiny really not insignificant and there's a good chance that i'd probably get used to it as time goes on but god it felt small and insignificant and when i looked at the large if you look at it close up like this wristwatch check i'm wearing a saint automatic watch it's a micro brand really enjoying this but if you look at your a watch from there it looks as big as it's ever going to look to anybody from a distance when you're further back like that people can see the watch but they don't think oh my god it looks like a giant plate on your wrist so it's only in our head that watch size is a, is a major issue i feel so the medium cartier santos in white beautiful i need to try it on again just to make sure but my initial reaction is like christ that is way too small the large although in my photos it seems like it's maybe a little bit big for me it didn't feel too big it didn't look too big when i looked in the mirror I tried several different mirrors as well walking around posing in mirrors in ad's ridiculous but it's got to be done hasn't it so i tried them on the large and the mediums they were good and the next in line was the breitling chronomat i really fancied a colored dial a salmon dial or a brightly coloured dial, but I'm really nervous of investing a large sum of money in a watch with a funky dial, which might just be a fad and I might end up getting bored of it eventually. So that's a real concern for me. But the Chronomat, I love the design, I love the look of it. And unfortunately, it's exactly what I thought. It's a hell of a chunky watch. It's got no micro adjustment, but it's a frigging gorgeous looking thing. So for me, it was out there running because I just know you're going to get that top heaviness. It's going to dangle down your wrist. It's going to feel like it weighs a ton. And in those situations, watches like that for me, they have to be in a one watch collection. If I've got just that one watch and I'm wearing it all day, every day, I'll get used to it and it's not a problem. But when I'm chopping and changing between 38, 39, up to 42 mil watches, it'll just feel like a monster on my wrist. So for that reason, that reason alone, the size and the weight was out. But as a watch, as a standalone piece, the Chronomat, in any of the dial combinations, what a glorious watch. Now, the surprise of that day was the pistachio green, the mint green Breitling Premier Heritage line, I think it is. Oh, my God. In person, delightful to look at. An absolute beauty watch. But... Without stating the obvious, it was very fucking green. <laughs> and I mean, it looked like, even now I'm thinking, God, it's an ice cream. Ice cream. But it, it looks like ice cream. It, it's just too green. If, if, the, if I know that's the whole point. If you're going to buy a green watch, buy a green watch. But it's just too green. 
on the crocodile strap, it looked great. But again, I just don't know how it feels like a fad. I feel like I'd fall in love with it. I'd love it. And within a week of wearing it, I'd be looking down thinking, that is a lot of green on my wrist. And I think I'd get bored of it. But that kind of watch, you need it in a collection where you've got a Rolex, an Amiga, what, loads of other classic watches. And that's just your curveball that you can throw on every now and then. And it'll look absolutely mint. But the unfortunate thing is that, as one of my, that'd be one of my one or two main watches in my collection, and it's just too funky for me, unfortunately. Amazing watch, though, isn't it? Would you buy that Breitling? It's bizarre, isn't it? I, I love it, but it's just not for me, I don't think. And then, oh, the Speedmaster Chronoscope in blue. Now, I have fancied this watch from afar, but if you look on Instagram, there's not many people that are taking photos of these watches. Not that many people own it. They're all like marketing shots and relatively new watch. I get that. But when you see forums or you read people's comments, people don't give a crap about this watch. They don't seem to like it. I love it. I know it's a busy dial, but unfortunately, it's a 43, 44 mil watch and it's just too big. Now, if it was the same size as the Speedmaster, it would be a real contender for being in the collection. But for me... That watch, the sizing of it for me is just not going to work, unfortunately. So that was out instantly. I tried the uh, Amiga Seamaster on in the two-tone, the black dial with the yellow gold. Oh, la, la. Oh, excuse my French. That is a absolutely stunning watch. But unfortunately, it's still a victim of the ginormous clasp situation, which is why I got rid of my other Speedmaster previously. I could get it on rubber. I've got all my Zealand rubber straps as well that I could wear with it. And that's a contender on its own because it's a bit of gold, it's a bit of luxury. You can't go wrong with a Seamaster apart from the clasp. Right, what else did we have? We're on to it. The big finale. The standout watch of that day. It was in Ernest Jones, the flagship store in Manchester. They've just got about every single watch you can think of. They've got a massive Bryant boutique, Amiga boutique, Cartier boutique. And it was the two-tone large Santos Oh la la, this is a watch that I can definitely get on board with. It is right at the top of my wish list now. Granted, I haven't tried any Rolexes on in the recent past, uh, but this just stands head and shoulders about everything else that I've been thinking about. I just think it's gorgeous. And the gold bits are shiny and it's gold, so it's got that real luxurious feel. But because it's just the little screws going down the bracelet, there's not going to be hairline scratches everywhere. The actual bezel, the gold bezel, that is going to be a victim of scratches within seconds of you walking out of the store. You've got to accept that to a certain degree, but it's just, it's very thin. The case is actually curved, so it goes around your wrist. And for me, it's going to be comfortable. It's going to be sexy. And for me, that, guys, is a number one choice at the moment. I am really, really, really tempted to get that watch. So that's at top of my list at the moment. And that's the update on the possible budget of what I'm going to be spending on my next watch. Right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.